Call our city council meeting to order and ask uh, the Weblo uh, Boy, Scout, uh, Boy Scout Group 36 to come up forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, guys. Oh, no, face this, face this way. The flag's over here. You ready? Okay. I I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You want to shake everybody's hand up here? Thank, thank you. you very much Thanks for again. Thank, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Got to go over this side now. <laughs> we really got to do this. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, come on, buddy. Give me the nuts. Right. Give me the nuts. Give me the nuts. Nice. 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 There you go. <laughs> Good job, guys. Blow it up. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you very case. much. Okay, they're here. Okay, the roll, please. Belzac. Here. Clistic. Here. Kenny. Here. Marquez. Here. MacGyver. Shower. Here. Vaughn. Here. Six present and one absent. We have a quorum. The next item on the agenda is questions, comments, and announcements of a general nature. Does anyone in the audience want to address the city council? It doesn't have to be on items that are on the agenda this evening, but you just wanted to, uh, to uh, express your opinions to us. Come on up. Do you want to come up to the microphone? Hi, good evening. And you might have to pull that down so it's close to your mouth. Okay. Hi, good evening. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, I just wanted to touch basis on uh, Sterogenics. Yes. I'm sure many of us are aware of this company that's poisoning our community. Um, I just recently got involved. Um, I, I attended the meeting that was held November 29th, and I walked out of there terrified uh, of what this company is doing to Willowbrook and the outlining communities. Um, I attended the demonstration at their headquarters this Saturday. We had a great turnout. Um, and I've only lived in Darien for a year and a half. Had I known that this was going on, I would have never moved here. I have two small grandchildren at home, and I'm worried not only for myself, but for them, <coughs> for their future. We don't, there's, there's so much that's unknown about this, this uh, chemical that's being spewed into, into our air that uh, it terrifies me. You're absolutely right. We, that there's a lot of unknowns. And do you get our direct connect? Did you see the letter I wrote to? Uh, I did. You I did. did. Okay. So. And um, thank you. Um, but I'd like to see Darian more involved. It's this is not only a, a fight for Willowbrook and their residents, but all the residents in the surrounding communities. Darian being uh, included. What work do you think we should be doing? Um, you know we have you know we have no control over shutting this down yes, except for the I letters we write but to we the are EPA. stronger in numbers ma'am pardon me and we are stronger in numbers and our demonstration uh, on Saturday we had a good turnout as I indicated there's many of your residents in Darien that don't know anything uh, that this is going on I mean I, I don't know what way you could reach out to everybody not everybody is 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 internet savvy the older the older community um, I, I'm, that's one of my questions. How can you reach out to all your residents so that they are aware, so they can get involved? We are, we are reaching out in every way we know. So it's up to the individual residents to take their care to get the information that we send out so they can get involved. Okay, and which way are you reaching out to, to citizens? Like I said, not everybody is on, on Twitter and Facebook. How else are you reaching out to your citizens in Darien? You, you expect us to go door to door? Is that what you're expecting? No, I'm not asking you to go to door to door. Okay. I'm, uh, asking, we are I'm asking you for your opinion. What, what other way? We're doing every uh, way we can to get the word Which out. Which is how? Well, Give me Mayor, an example. If I, could, if I could help. I mean, we are our direct connect that goes to probably almost 4,000 people now. Uh, our Facebook, all of our social media, uh, we are covering. Uh, I'm not we on send Facebook. Out Pardon me? I'm not on Facebook. But you're on Direct Connect. No, I'm not. I don't know what that is. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's what we had first asked. The uh, that's an electronic newsletter that goes out to residents every Friday and on other special days, and that hits about four thousand people now. And we're getting the word out that way. Uh, the schools okay. are also have been involved. Um, so you know, getting the word out, we are doing that primarily social media. We have a, a newsletter that goes out every other month um, for people that really aren't computer savvy or may not be on social media. And we have information um, in that also. And, and surely word of mouth and news. Uh, you know, I was surprised for you to hear a lot of residents don't know about it. I'm pretty sure a lot of residents do know about it. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the numbers that don't. And, we and, need to reach out to everybody. Right. And if, if you haven't signed up for our, our Direct Connect newsletter, you should. And you should tell your neighbors to do and that. And I have no idea what you're talking about and how to sign up for it. Okay. All all we need is your yes. yeah. If you if you email me your with your email address, we'll send you up sign you up automatically. Okay. And then you'll get that information. But um, you know, we are getting a, a lot of feedback, and and we do we are trying to direct people to some degree to the w village of Willowbrook's website. Um, but one of the things the city did recently, and rec that's where I've gotten all my information from. And that's, yeah, that's we where are I look trying. Toward. We are trying to do that in terms of a centralized location. And that was, we did that early on. Otherwise, there's too many places where people would start trying to go to when um, there's one central place. But we are putting, we put out information almost every every Friday on our Direct Connect yeah. with the goal of letting people know. And the city uh, also has uh, filed a lawsuit to intervene in the case with the Attorney General and the uh, and this, uh, DuPage County State's Attorney. So we've done that. Willowbrook's done that. Uh, Bur, uh, Burr Ridge is also looking at that. So I think letting you know what we're doing is important. That's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So if, if you don't have that message yet, we'll get you on our Direct Connect. And, okay. Or you can go to our website. Everything's on there. But it'll be sent to you every Friday. Okay. When you, when you said you saw my letter, I assumed that you were on Direct Connect because just this past no, Friday. No, I, 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 I saw it on uh, Willowbrook's website. Our, my letter? Yeah, yeah, we sent okay. it to Willowbrook, right. and they put it on their yeah, website we, also. We, that w was part of our direct connect that went on on Friday. So you'll definitely want to get a hold of uh, okay. City Hall to get your... Because the people on the east side of Darien, um, where I live, I'm only two miles away from this facility. You know, and right now the water testing that they did is a mile, it, it, you know, uh, from the, the facility. We don't know anything about this chemical. We don't know how far it extends. We yes. do know that it stays in the air for months. That's correct. We, so, there's a lot of information that's out there that we are sending out to our residents okay. and pointing them in the right direction to find that information. Thank you for your comments. Ma'am, do, do you watch Channel 6 on the TV at home? No. Channel 6 has got this meeting live on it right now, okay. and, it's, and this meeting gets recorded a couple times throughout the course of the day. And it also, our, this meeting is also on, it goes on a, a City Darien's YouTube channel. So this is, a, this is also on TV and on the internet. Okay. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, do we have any well water in Darien or we're, we're all sitting? We're, we're, we're being <coughs> tested. Yeah, we have, we have wells in Darien. It's mostly uh, east of, uh, of uh, Clarendon Hills Road where some of the uh, homes okay. have, still have wells. So uh, those okay. homes so are being tested okay. as, we, as we speak. Right, and just not to alarm anybody, let me know, uh, um, basically what has happened, DuPage County uh, Health Department has sent out a directive that they wanted municipalities to provide them with a list of uh, water customers, potable water customers that are on the city system, first of all. Those are not the systems that are being tested. Um, what the DuPage County Health Department was looking at was individual wells. In those wells, people, in, uh, residents in Darien, still some of them have used well water for potable water. Okay, so that's what DuPage County Health Department is testing Testing. for. Right. Our water is perfectly fine, uh, so I just don't want to put another alarm out there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for clarification. Let's move on to the approval of the minutes of November 17th. Do I have a motion to approve? 19, 19. Ah, a Motion. typo on our... No. November 19th, 2018. My minute says 19, mm -hmm. 17. Yeah. <laughs> the agenda says 17th. Oh, I've got... Okay. <laughs> Mine is correct, sorry. <laughs> okay. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of November 19th? 19th, so moved. Okay. Alderman Kenny's seconded by Alderman Marquez. 
Any additions or deletions to the minutes? Then the roll, please. Kenny? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Clistic? Aye. Fawn? Aye. Shower? Aye. Seven ayes and one absent. The minutes have been approved. Let's move to receiving of communications. Do any of the Somebody aldermen have communications to share? Alderman Vaughn? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, one, one, comment, uh, one comment. I was at Stop Stare Gen X event on Saturday. And uh, we got a lot of good feedback from the residents of Darien on your response to um, reaffirm our commitment mm -hmm. to um, the, the state's attorney and the attorney general. So yeah. they're very uh, pleased by that. So they want to thank, you know, S City Administrator Vanna and the mayor for a quick response. So well, I, I made sure that was hard hitting. I mean, the fact that we've we've already had some results, mm -hmm. test results back, and they are totally opposites it doesn't make sense uh and so with that in mind it, it was a bit of a challenge to keep the one page but i think we tried to get the message out so it wasn't in four or five pages but yeah. get the message out in one page because it's you know that's typically easier to read and what more people will stay tuned to but yeah. all right thank you thank you any other uh alderman kenny yes, all, um, uh, <coughs> Good evening, Madam Mayor. Um, we've got um, some communications back and forth. Mr. Gombeck and um, Anita Kwanzi on Shelley Court regarding the parking and um, police, I think, might have been involved. And do we, you know, I'm seeing that I didn't realize we had three emails here in the last half an hour or so. Where are we at with that? Do you know? With the Shelley Court situation, the mm -hmm. parking. Yeah. Um, basically, the issue, and again, just to recap, uh, several months ago, um, a resident on Shelley Court had asked us to revisit the current restriction on parking there uh, without not getting into all the logistics. Uh, the Municipal Services Committee had looked at it once while we did the Municipal Services Committee did look at it. Uh, since a group was formed by the, uh, I believe it was the school district, uh, school district. by the school district, uh, in conjunction with that, DuPage County Division of Transportation was involved. Uh, the police department in that drive was to look at uh, safer, um, safer to make the area more secure and safer for pedestrians and motorists. Um, with that said, we've uh, basically taken Shelley Court and Carroll Court and have asked the group, uh, whether it's the school, basically the school and whoever else is uh, participating in that group, to comment on the parking along Park avenue as well as shelley court and carroll court at the end of the day there may be no feedback with that said the options at this point are either a remove the signs on carroll court and shelley court and have no restriction on parking um, and or or the second option was to modify the hours that are a little more realistic or in tune with the current programs that are happening with DYC and or some of the curriculum uh, school events that are happening there. Okay, and I and we've got, um, I know a few of us got communications right after the, the heavy snow with the branches, because I guess it was so heavy with, with the branches, but what, the, you know, what can we tell the residents in a typical fashion when we have those events where I think, first of all, you know, we evaluate every, sto every storm, uh, especially when trees come down or branches come down. In this particular case, the branches that came down really was not of any significance. Um, and part of it is the branches that were coming down were a lot on private property. Um, you know, one thing I'd like to, you know, make sure that we get the message out there is that during the spring, summertime, we do have contracts out for... Um, tree trimming and residents should look at that and possibly take advantage of it through our vendor uh, that would prevent some of that stuff as well um, it's the ones that came down on the parkway were areas that were scheduled to be trimmed coming up december 1st uh, and those were in alderman uh, vaughn's area uh, as well as uh, alderman belzik's area so uh you know we do look at it if a tornado or a mini burst comes through yeah we would take appropriate action and execute a plan to remove the branches Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Any other communications to share? Then let's move on to the mayor's report. And uh, this is always the fun time of the year when we uh, call on our home decorating uh, committee to bring forward the, uh, the, all the home decorating contest winners. And I would like <coughs> to open up the uh, floor to uh, 
Jerry, Jerry Legansky is, uh, is part of our committee, Elizabeth Hayes, and Jim Kaiser. And uh, take, take it from here. Great. Thank you, Madam Mayor and City Council. Um, you know, the committee is myself, Jerry Legansky, Liz Hayes, and, and Jim Kaiser. And, uh, you know, we were, we were a little worried this year because you all know that Sunday after Thanksgiving, we got pounded with, with the snowstorm. And so we were a little worried, you know, how many people really got a chance to go out and decorate. But uh, they did not let us down. Um, these uh, winners are very committed, diehard decorators, and the snow did not hold them up one bit. Um, we had 21 nominations, which was a good number. Um, we, um, you'll see some new faces today, and you'll also see some old faces as well who've been past winners. Uh, a couple of things we uh, saw this year, which was really kind of nice. Um, more people were doing cutouts, what we used to remember as kids. Um, Hand-painted cutouts with spotlights on them. I mean, that's what I remember growing up. So we saw some of that this year, which is kind of, you know, kind of like a old-fashioned type of uh, of decorating. Um, Grinch is popular. I think the movie's been a hit because there were some nice Grinch uh, displays and uh, people using Grinch in their decorations, and even some Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars is 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 popular this year. There were some people that decorated with Star Wars. Um, as you get to know these neighbors of ours who are decorators, um, I kind of want to fill you in on, on some of the things that I've learned from working with these people and meeting them over the years. Um, you know, they don't do this for themselves. I mean, they really are doing it for their love of decorating. Maybe they had a, um, it was a family tradition growing up. Um, they have good memories of it. Uh, they like to have people come to their homes and see it. They like to do it for neighbors. Um, so they're, you know, they're really not doing it for themselves. I mean, they are doing it because they, you know, want to kind of give back to the community. Um, they're really artists in a lot of ways. I mean, they're, you know, they plan things. They, 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 they uh, come up with an idea. So I like to think of them really as, as artists. And, uh, you know, if, if, if a bulb or a string of lights is out of my house, I really don't care. <laughs> but not, not these uh, winners today. Uh, they're out there changing lights in the middle of a cold night, and it bugs them if the light's out. So they're out there fixing things to make sure it's just perfect. And um, that's just really something that I, um, I found very interesting that you know, they care that much about their displays. Um, they do like traditions. Like I said, they probably had good memories growing up. Uh, where they even try to bring some of those things as kids back into their decorations now at their homes and pass it on to their kids, which is a, a very nice touch. And uh, so I just want to say that we're very grateful for their time that they put into this. Um, we enjoy doing this, and uh, we enjoy recognizing them and thank them for the time and money that they put into this to make Darren a little brighter place. So enough about that. Um, like I said, we have um, five honorable, I mean, four honorable mentions and uh, five winners. And the honorable mention winners really are not in any, any particular order. Uh, but the, um, yeah. the first honorable mention we have is 818 Bel Air Drive, which is the home of Jason and Rachel Steeman. And I know Jason's here because when I went to meet him, I, I realized that we sit about a section apart from the Bears at the Bear game. So we were, <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm a little hoarse today, you know why. <laughs> um, Jason and Rachel have been Daring residents for seven years, and, and Jason does the decorating. There's white lights along the eaves, windows, and roof lines. And there's white lights on the bushes as well. Uh, there's red and green spotlights that highlight their home and a laser from their roof that highlights their front lawn. Um, uh, they were winners a couple years ago, and they had a movie projecting on their front home, um, which was a first. Uh, while well, Jason's kind of taking it to another level, um, you know, growing up we had drive-in drive theaters. This is a drive-up theater. I mean, you can literally drive up and sit in your car and turn on um, 88.7, and you can listen to 
the movie that's being played on their home. So um, if you need a cheap date, <laughs> maybe it's a place to go. But take your kids and enjoy it. Um, also on their front lawn, there is a dancing Santa and a snowmobile uh, that has a little bit of a story to it. And I'm just glad Jason's here to, that he was able to tell me the story. But there's a real snowmobile as part of their display on their front lawn, which is definitely at first. So um, I see Jason's here. But uh, so thank you, Jason and Rachel, for uh, Daring's first drive up theater. Okay. Our next honorable mention is is a is a repeat customer to uh, 7406 Richmond Avenue, the home of Ron and Kathy Needham. I saw them come in, and uh, Ron and Kathy have lived in their dairy and home for 18 years now, and they've got a huge yard that makes a great canvas, a great landscape for just a, a an assortment of uh, beautiful holiday decorations. Both Ron and Kathy enjoy decorating. And they even take time, they tour other displays across the county just if they hear there's something good out there to go see. <laughs> um, new to their display this year was they also had some cutouts. And it takes time to make these things. These are wooden cutouts that you have to actually carve out. And then they're hand-painted. Um, so it's a wooden Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and, of course, the Grinch. And you can even see the Grinch over on the side, and you can, they've got the lights hooked up so it looks like he's stealing them off the bushes. Um, there's a star with lighted rays glowing nearby, and Mr. and Mrs. Santa are also new to the display, um, especially if you have children. Children would be delighted to, uh, to go and see this display. There's a projection, light projection on the east side of the house. There's a moose, a bear, trees, Santa, arches, penguins. And uh, Santa and his reindeer are airborne over on the one side of the house. Um, it looks like they're flying over a little town. There's little outlines of houses. So, Ron, Kathy, thank you for this grand display. It, it, it's just a delight to see. Do you want to come up and get your certificate? Um, our next honorable mention is, is, is new to our, our awards. It's at 7929 Adams. It's the Angus family home, and I'm looking to see if they came here. There we are back there. There's <coughs> Mr. Angus. Um, I stopped by. I, I spoke with their son, Jack, and they had a, uh, a beautifully coordinated display in just red and white lights. It's, it's so color. It's so attractive in terms of, of color. They've lived in this home for six years. Um, I later talked to, to um, the, his dad later on, too, and there's a sign on the front walk that when you walk up that informs the visitors that Clark Griswold lives here, <laughs> uh, along with a Let It Snow sign. Uh, Jack told me that the decorations are done by himself, his dad, and his brother. Uh, there's a reindeer pulling a sleigh sitting in the front yard along with lighted snowmen, candy canes and lanterns. Uh, two giant, giant candy canes flank the garage door. They're as big as a garage door themselves. Uh, there's a lighted reindeer glowing in the upstairs window and the front door is wrapped like a package with a giant red bow. Um, so I thanked, uh, uh, Derek, I think you said your name was... Darren, I thank Darren over the phone when he called me back yesterday, and uh, it's a beautiful holiday site, so thank you. Uh, come on up and get your certificate. Congratulations. Um, another honorable mention is at 901 Bel Air. It's the home of Nick Hamilton and Erica Lucas. I see the family right here in front. Um, Nick has lived in this area for five years. Erica's lived here for 27 years. And uh, when I went to visit their, their home, it was Caden, who's four, informed me he is the decorator in the family. <laughs> here we go. Good job, Caden. Uh, the family's done a great job of lighting this display. Again, there's a soldier, there's a snowman guarding the front door along with large candles. There's candy canes lining in the driveway. The yard has lighted snowmen, a Santa, a nativity scene, and a train. There's twinkling stars, a Merry Christmas greeting, and blinking lights on the basketball pole for a completely fun holiday season. So thank you, Nick, uh, Erica, and uh, 
and the kids for, for this wonderful holiday scene. Thanks a lot. Come up and get your kids. <laughs> This must be Caden. This is Caden. Caden tells decorator? me he's the decorator. Are you the decorator? <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks, Caden. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on to our starting with the number five place winner is uh, 809 Bel Air, home of Rob and Annette Sirocco. There they are. Yep. I saw them when I came in. Um, Rob and Annette have lived at this address for 15 years, or lived in Darien for 15 years, and the last nine years at this address. And their display is Whoville, and uh, home of Cindy Lou Who and site of the Grinch's transformation. Uh, Rob made all the wooden cutouts for this display. I counted 17 individual cutouts. I probably missed some. Some are large, some are small. Um, he said it took him a week to do the shapes. I thought he was going to tell me two months. Um, <laughs> and then he hand painted all of them, too. So the characters are lit up by floodlights. On the second story of the house, you see the Grinch, and the Grinch is like pulling himself along the gutter with five separate wreaths up at the top. Um, and I mean, it's, it's a second story. Uh, Cindy Lou and the other Whoville residents are gathered around a lighted tree on the grass, and the display is completed by signs on the porch, a lighted igloo, a penguin, a moose, and snowflakes. Thanks for your hard work on this, Robin and Annette. This is just a delightful display. Okay, moving up to um, fourth place is a familiar uh, address, 1905 Center Circle, which is the home of Dan and Ann McGinley. Uh, uh, Dan is the architect for this great display and, and starts decorating before Halloween. Uh, they've been residents of Darren for 25 years. There are colored lights on the, lee, on the eaves and roof lines with gold icicles hanging from the eaves as well. Uh, colored bulbs outline the walkways, and there's wreaths on the garage. There's a series of inflatables on the front lawn, which include a Merry Christmas greeting, Santa and his sleigh with reindeers, along with a snowman and Christmas tree. And not only is Santa on display upstairs, but there's Grinch up there as well. Uh, there's an inflatable uh, snowman by the driveway. They have their tree in the front window, and there are also green and red laser lights that light up their home. Uh, if you look on the second floor, there's a laser show, with, and there's also um, projections of presents and Santas on their garage door, and red and green lights on their fence that look like the northern lights. And as you walk up, um, again, uh, there are uh, three cut-out hand-painted elves uh, that Dan said his father made over 50 years ago. Um, and that really struck me because, again, it's, 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 it's Dan's bringing his dad's, you know, display to his home now. Um, and, um, and again, as you drive up, be sure to roll on your window because you'll hear 93.9 playing. So not only do you take it in with vision, you can hear the sound of Carol's playing as well. So um, thanks again, Dan and Ann, for your great display. Yes, and this is the guy that does all the decorating. Yes, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, I do it, yeah. I do it. Thank you. Dan's dad was our city treasurer for many years, Lou McGinley. Uh, his photo is out in the, uh, in the lobby. I, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Moving up to our third place winner, um, someone new as well. Um, our third place winner this year is 8125 Sawyer, which is the home of Henry and Maria Harth. And I know they're here. Um, Henry and Maria have been Darien residents for 29 years. Uh, 
Henry's the architect, but they say they normally work as a team. But unfortunately, um, Maria is on the DL. She had some surgery, so she wasn't as big a help as she has been in the past. Um, but um, they start decorating again before Thanksgiving, so they beat the snow this year. And there are white LED lights everywhere on this home. There is not a line, a uh, roof line, an eave, anywhere that doesn't have white LED lights somewhere on it. And at the very top of their home is this big um, star as well. Uh, Henry told me he loves LEDs because it keeps his costs down. He says he's, his, his electric costs have probably gone down like 50%, and you'll know why, because there's just so many lights on this house. Um, there's a tree in the driveway alone that has over 1,000 lights on it, just on one tree. Um, it's, just, it's just really spectacular. There is candy canes and toy soldiers that line the entire front of their home and along their driveway as well. Uh, there's two reindeer that pull a sleigh filled with presents, and there's a snowman as well on the front, uh, front lawn. Uh, their Christmas tree is proudly displayed in their front window. So uh, thank you, Henry and Maria, for your beautiful holiday uh, display again this year. Thank you. You were on the DL list? Yes, you are. That's the hand. Sorry, I squeezed it. Thank you. Okay, moving forward. Uh, the number two place winner is uh, 1301 Iroquois Lane, home of Anna and Risto Kirov. There she is. Um, <laughs> Anna and Risto and their three children, Christopher, Anthony, and Victoria, have lived in the house for four and a half years on the Iroquois Lane. And it's so hard for me to describe how artistic this display is. Um, it, it's, it's just a most unusual display of color. Um, there's traditional lights there, but there are other colors that they've blended in, and it, it's, just a, it's just a beauty to behold. The roof line, the bushes in front, the chimney, and the perimeter of the yard are all outlined in a very unique fashion. Um, there's a huge Santa Claus sitting in the front yard. There's a soldier. Olaf is there and snowflakes. Um, you've got chasing lights and, and color-changing lollipops. And on the garage door, there is a, a, a projection. Um, and it's line drawings. It's, it's very unique projection. It's line drawings. It goes through a series of displays that includes children and gifts and greetings. Uh, Christmas music is playing for those who stop to see the lights. And uh, thank you, Kira family, for this really beautiful display. And music <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations. Nice job. <laughs> okay. Um, the first place winner this year is, is someone who won three years ago. And the address is 7718 Sawyer, which is the home of Sherry Gillespie. And I, I don't think Sherry's here. She said she had a meeting tonight that she was going to try to switch, so maybe she wasn't able to make it. Um, but uh, the Gillespie family have been Darien residents for 36 years. Uh, Sherry is the, is the decorator, and she starts before Thanksgiving as well. Um, all, all the decorations are real, uh, from the tree inside their home um, to the swag, the evergreen swag that's around all their eaves with white lights on there. Uh, there's two red-lit candy canes and a snowman that anchor the front of their home. There's a big wreath with white lights on the front as well. Um, all the shrubs in front are, are um, decorated in either red or green lights, and all the larger trees are adorned in these bright white lights. It's, it's, it's really done very, very, very um, well. Uh, art, um, it's an artwork, really it is. And um, no detail is left undone. Uh, there's lights on the mailbox, and when you ring the doorbell, it plays carols. <laughs> Uh, so again, every detail is, is, is taken care of. Um, there are red, green, and white solar ornaments on their front tree and their parkway. So there's ornaments that just uh, light up, uh, and they're solar, so they, they just light up throughout the night. And then also on the uh, front lawn, 
Uh, there's uh, firefly lights. There's these little lights that just are situated all throughout the front lawn that just go off and on at one at a time. And I'm sure once it snows, it's, it's going to be really beautiful. So um, congratulations, uh, Sherry Gillespie, for uh, this, this year's first place winner. Okay, and lastly, um, last year we started having a um, the best block, and um, as you can see, there's been a few numbers on the 800 block of Bel Air. Um, Bel Air is really starting to step up their game and and um, uh, do a very very nice job. Uh, but uh, again, this year uh, the 77 the 77 7800 block of uh, Sawyer is again uh, best block. So. Is anybody here from? Hey, okay. <laughs> Gary, did you want to take both of them? Yeah, yeah that'd be fine. I, I've got two for 7,700 yes. and 78. Do you yeah. want to take both? Okay. And then did you, you want to? No, nobody knows. She doesn't know. No one knows. Yeah. yeah. Yes. She told me she was now. Big surprise. Big surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah. There's quite a few homes on the block again that are that are decorated very very nicely. Um, so uh, uh, I think Sherry kind of coordinates it. Um, so not only is she doing her own uh, home, but she's helping neighbors and doing the block, and um, um, it's just a there's a lot of nice homes on that block, so make sure you take a chance to go down there. Um, this Wednesday will be the bus tours. I think there's two bus tours going out again this year, 8.30 and 6.30 and 8, I think it is. 6.30 and 8, yes. yes. Um, so yes. Uh, I think they're going to be... Uh, yeah, so that, I, I'm not sure. I haven't heard whether the, the buses are filled. But uh, if anyone's interested in doing the tour, either 6.30 or 8 o'clock, to go, re go around and see all these beautiful home decorations. Uh, please feel free to call City Hall and sign up. We still have time for you to sign up because the tour is Wednesday night. Correct. And uh, uh, thank you to Jerry. Jerry, yep. Jim, and Elizabeth, nice. thank you so much for all of your effort. Jim, you're going to show off the uh, the the uh, yeah. Jim's poster got the there. Uh, Jim's got the poster. I think got we nearly poster board with all these beautiful homes. You want me to bring everybody up for a picture again? Well, it sounds great. Okay. Sounds great. Okay, all the Who's, winners. Yeah. Yeah, all the winners? Last year. That worked out pretty good. Okay, good. All the winners, come on up. That's almost the whole audience. That's <laughs> <laughs> nice. I have an extra write up if they want to have it for the bus tour, maybe. If they want to talk about it. Do you want to take that? Yeah. yeah Jerry, so, we'll need that. Okay, tall people in the back. <laughs> We're not kidding? Tall, yeah. tall people in the back. <laughs> okay. And then, Jim, are you going to have the, the photos up I'm Mr. McGillian. Yes, we'll have the couple of these your little shavers well. hold yeah. the poster board. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 I'm sorry to hear about that. Well, oh, that might cover you up. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> might have to go on the side. Your dad and I were in the Lions Club for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Still got there you go. And where's the bear? Yeah. Oops, I got it. <laughs> 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 really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, where, where am I going to fit in? She doesn't do any decorating. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Warnicke, did you decorate your house? <laughs> you decorate your right house? Go right in here, huh? Okay, I don't want to stand in front of anybody. Okay. There you go. Should we get in here? Good. That's good. Okay. I'm going to zoom in. Walked we'll in. take a couple here. Everybody smile. Cheese. Applesauce, the Grinch. Mm -hmm. All righty. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Jim, can we sing? Can you hold it up so we can sing? Jim, where's your sweater? Thanks, Jim. Oh, nice. It nice. did last year. <laughs> where's the winner? Nice pictures, Jim.
We could, Dan, we could put that on top of the garbage can holder upstairs. <laughs> Container looks great out there. It looks fantastic. You have to close, have to close the top down. <laughs> that was good, Lester. That was good. The answer is Nisha should have went first, huh? The whole audience would have it. Probably could have should have done that. Mm. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to invite uh, Beth and Dan Tischler to come forward. Uh, we probably should have had you uh, come first <laughs> so the audience could have seen all the wonderful things you do. Get them back in here. Well, uh, don't, don't forget, this is televised. This meeting <laughs> okay, is tele- I'm it's te Oh, I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you or anything. <laughs> but I, just, I just want you to know that there will be people watching this meeting tonight and then in the future we'll be able to see all the wonderful things that you're talking about tonight. Awesome. Okay. Hi, my name is Nicole Kilray, and I proudly stand before you as a representative of Darien's own Cancer Smashers. On behalf of all the Cancer Smashers, I want to thank you all for allowing us to come before you tonight to tell you about us and our latest mission to end a particular kind of cancer. Our foundation started in 2011 with just a handful of kids from Darien helping to raise money and awareness to help fight cancer. We've all been affected by this horrible disease in one way or another, whether it be a friend or a relative losing their battle to cancer or someone fighting to beat it. As a group, we have grown to realize the impact that we can have. We have raised over $100,000, collected over 8,000 toys for kids in and around Darien, and donated thousands of pieces of winter clothes, and have regular, regularly appeared on TV, have appeared in many news articles, and received multiple awards. We are very proud to say that we pay for our organization through our recycling program so that no cancer smasher has to pay for anything. And also so that 100% of the money we raise goes to cancer research. These are all great things that we are very proud of, but we have not cured all cancers, which is our main goal. On January 5th, 2018, cancer took one of Darian's children, Joey. Joey was only seven years old. He was a bright, silly kid who loved baseball, just a normal Darian kid. He unfortunately lost his battle with DIPG, a rare form of pediatric brain cancer. We learned that at the time, DIPG is incurable, and there are very few doctors doing aggressive research on this disease that took our Joey. We, we refuse to sit back and do nothing for Joey's family and for all the other children who have been affected by DIPG. We are proud to say that we have found a doctor from Robert H. Lurie Cancer Center of Northwestern University and Lurie Children's Hospital who is going to specifically work on DIPG research in honor of Joey. In order to help him with this research, we need to raise funds, which is why we are here today. Over the Darien Fest weekend, we sold raffle tickets for this Cubs painting, displayed right there. This painting is significant as the Cubs were Joey's favorite baseball team. We were able to sell quite a few tickets, but we have more to go. Our goal is to sell all of the ticket. Our goal is to sell all 1,000 tickets so we can give 20,000 to Dr. Becker so he can begin his research. We are proactively going around town to different organizations to spread the word for this raffle. Can you help us by asking friends and family if they would like to purchase a ticket for $20? We have some with us right now, or we can set up an appointment to deliver tickets to someone who would like to help. Please know that we are also accepting any donation amount as well if someone would rather do that. Again, on behalf of all 62 Cancer Smashers, I thank you for allowing us to be here today. Perhaps if we all give a little time and or money, we can honor our friend Joey in a true daring way and end DIPG. Thank you. Um, so somebody else going to speak? Okay, then I need to ask a question. Uh, so who did the artwork on this? On the, on the uh... um, it's Elliot from from Art Beat Live. He painted it for it and donated it to us. Um, to be able wow, to do the that's raffle. great. Here's what I'm, I was thinking. Um, you, wh when are you going to have the raffle announcement? The winner uh, is in, the in, end of the year. We're selling tickets till the um, December thirty first. So you're not going farther than that. You're not going into the new year. Okay. No. Okay. Because I was going to suggest we put the 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 painting the artwork up here in the city hall with some sort of, you know, description on it as to what you're doing. But um, 
So you could extend the period, you know, of time to collect money. I, I was just thinking, you know, that's, you know, I don't. I would you would you trust us to keep it in in the lobby, you know, to. Uh, we'll leave it here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, and then Beth or Dan, do you want to do you want to create something to to put on there as an announcement of what what, what we're doing? Sure, the kids could definitely um, put something together, a display and. Yeah, Mary Belmonte already put something on Direct Connect. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's a, because like we you heard tonight, four thousand residents are on that uh, are on Direct Connect. Perfect. I was so su surprised when that woman you know was asking me to do things when. Cheapers. I don't think she checked out all the avenues that we we advertise ourselves. But at any rate, uh, yeah, whatever we can do to help you advertise this. How do you how do you buy a ticket? Do you have uh, Facebook? I mean, I got a couple of thousand. <laughs> 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 we have physical tickets that we've been selling, and then also Definitely on our website um, www.cancersmashers.org, um, we have a PayPal account there where you can I donate, know, and in the description you can put how many tickets you'd like, and we get that directly to our email, so we can reach out to get you if you want the physical tickets, or we can just tell you the ticket numbers, and we can fill them out, um, yeah, and we can do that. Or if you need to just contact us directly. Um, really our email is cancersmashers1 at gmail.com yeah. and we have um, a square account too that we can email an invoice over as well can I ask how many tickets you have remaining a lot a lot <laughs> you know we're, we're just yeah you know we were just thinking out loud here uh, we don't get a lot of, of foot traffic coming into City Hall so maybe it isn't a good place to put that uh, piece of artwork uh, do you, can you think of another location where it might be a better venue to to show this off? The library. <laughs> I, I, that's what I said. I said the library, but uh, we'd have to ask them, you know, for permission if they would allow. About the park district. How about the park district? Yeah, park district. Churches. Rotating I mean, like on the, the only concern we have, obviously, is I mean to make sure it's protected. The protection you know I mean? of so it. Yes. If somebody's always going to be there, then I think we'll be okay with it. I don't need a police guard or anything like that. I'm just saying, though, is that if there's always if there's movement and people there, then I think it'll be fine. You know, I might be overthinking this too. I I, I just uh, I don't know if I'm going to a little bit we'll, too far. We'll run out to the kids too and see maybe if we can come up. They come up with some pretty cool ideas. So yeah. How about we do that at our next meeting? Okay. Then yeah, because then we can reach out to. Uh, the park district or whatever you know to see if they have ways to make sure it's protected they have that desk right up the uh yeah. up I at can have an answer tomorrow. oh mr sirocco there's the park district right Thank there yeah rob you could you could put that right on the dais at the at the yeah. the, at the entryway Thank yeah you. yeah <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, all of you. Thank you very much for all you do. Thank you, guys. Oh. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, too. Take care, guys. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Hey Beth, how are you doing? Here? Thank you. You have to show their ring off. <laughs> there you go. Great speech. You did a good job. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. And you're all on TV too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Here's a chip off the old box. <laughs> <laughs> hey Danny, good seeing you again. Good job, Merry Christmas. Yeah, they need to go. They need to keep this raffle going longer. You know? Especially Although, he's got, he's got a stack of tickets like that. <laughs> does he, he, but he, they might. They came to the Lions Club dinner. Oh, did they? They probably spent a year to hit it. Though. They took it in the yeah. next couple Lions Club. Oh, he's stepping up to the plate. Yeah. Must be gave him five hundred dollars. <laughs> they'll be on, they'll be out of school next week. So What's they the can, goal? They can work hard. You know, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's. Spread the check. Okay. Spare change.
Yeah, let's jump All right, folks. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the city clerk's report. I have a couple of items, Madam Mayor. Uh, Darien City offices will be closed on December 24th and 25th in observance of Christmas and also on January 1st for the New Year's Day. Um, I have an announcement about the notice of simultaneous filing. The lottery will take place on Wednesday, December the 26th, 2018, at 4 p.m. in the city clerk's office. The lottery is to determine the ballot placement for the consolidated election, which will take place on April the 2nd, um, and the following candidates will be affected. Ted V. Shower running for mayor, and Joseph A. Marquez running for mayor. Uh, they had simultaneous filing. And gentlemen, I have a letter for each of you that I'd like to give you so that you have it in writing as far as when the, if we could pass that down. Sure. And it will be posted on the, the door as well as on uh, the city site website. You're good. Thank you, sir. Hello. And do you want me to mention who has filed? You, you've never done it before, but okay, go, no. go for it. Yeah, go uh -huh. for it. Yeah. Okay, filing for uh, the position of mayor, there were three candidates that have submitted their petitions, and it's um, Ted V. Shower, Joseph A. Marquez, and Stephen Leopoldo. For the city clerk, Joanne Ragona. For the city treasurer, Michael Corin. For Ward 2, Lester Vaughn. Ward 4 is Tom Klistik. Ward 6 is Eric Gustafson and Francis Sabatka. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's move on to department head information. Uh, for, uh, we'll start with Chief. Are you still going? Oh, the administrator. I have no report, Mayor. Thank you. I crossed you off already. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of us, <laughs> Bad timing there. Bad timing. This is supposed to be a happy meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Let's move on to Police Chief uh, Thomas. Uh, I have not, uh, nothing formal, but I uh, uh, can ask, ask, ask any, any questions. Monthly anyone? report. Yeah, he's got his monthly report in here. All right. Merry Chief, Christmas. Chief, oh, okay. you had something in there about the um, reverse 911 as well as the uh, 911. You just gave a couple of websites to go to. Correct. One was a Fox website. Where would one, would one actually go to apply for that, though? Oh, for um, not the reverse necessarily, but the one where you give your information and they know about you. The smart one, smart nine one one. Yes, yeah, you can one. do that through Ducom or um, the smart one one itself. Okay. Well, that's on here. That's a website that he has right. on it. Yeah, one was Fox and one was yeah. There should be two for explaining smart. Um, what smart one 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 is, and then there was one where the article was um, published from uh, ABC, I think it was. It said Fox. Oh, Fox, yep. Okay. The, the Anything else for the chief? Go ahead. Yep. Oh, Go ahead. Just a quick comment. I did have to dial 911 for trucks parked illegally still on, uh, I don't know if it's at County, but it's, it's Cass Avenue in front of road. Right as you go to municipal services, there's a, a semi-truck parked there blocking the view. Calling 911 twice, it still seems to be a very repeated issue. Is that county? Should I reach out to the county to look at putting signs there? Because... It seems it's like no one has years. taken responsibility on it, uh, whether it's the Illinois Department of Transportation or DuPage County. Uh, our opinion is under the Illinois Department of Transportation jurisdiction. Okay. I, mean, I, can, I can give Greg and, and Julia a call and, and have them double check too on the county level. But yeah, every time I'm out there, there's always someone parked illegally out there. So. Where are all the well, they're not they're parked what, what illegally. Location? So right when you're turning, North, for example, you're heading Cass South, turning left to go to Minnesota Services, to that intersection right there, there's always trucks uh, parked illegally blocking the view. Going south on Cass Avenue? Correct. North, north, frontage, south, north frontage of Cass. North frontage of Cass, yeah. South oh, it's usually okay. a black it's truck. Yeah. Yeah. It's a white yeah. truck that's usually there. Yeah, it's oh, usually south, 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 south. Yeah. South, yeah. Yep. Okay. Scared gotcha. Me. I was, I was confused. Myself. I scared for myself. I'm going to send you a picture later. Okay. Actually. Whose property is that, you know? That's I don't. Uh, I'm seeing inside. That's part of their uh, median. They're parking on the front of the road. Yeah, I, I can share for a good picture. Okay. I did. I did have one, Chief. Sure. Uh, Focus Patrol, and I see it's down considerably. What exactly is Focus Patrol, and why is it down? Um, Focus Patrol is uh, when a um, officer is on a particular situation. So if you have uh, an increase in um, uh, burglary motor vehicles in a specific area, 
then they're spending time in that area, then it's focus patrol. In the past, um, focus patrol was anything that they put themselves out on. So you may put yourself um, in a, a shopping mall and there's six businesses there. I put myself out six different times in order to drive up numbers. Uh, it's not a numbers game. We just want to make sure that officers are where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there. Okay, yeah, thank you. Anything, any other questions for staff? Uh, we also have uh, uh, Dan Gombeck with Municipal Services here. Any questions for him this evening? For the uh, last uh, snowstorm that we had, did you guys try out that uh, pre-spray? No, or you know, uh, we, the equipment wasn't all in yet, and in that particular application, we would have not used it just due to the temperatures. Okay. Go too high up? Yes. Okay, oh, no more questions. All right, let's move on to uh, the treasurer's report. Treasurer Thank you, Madam Mayor. This evening I'm requesting council's approval of warrant number 1819.15 in the amount of $91,370.51 from the listed funds. Payroll for the period ended November 22nd in the amount of $318,003.59 for a total to be approved of $409,374.10. Motion to approve warrant 181915. Alderman Belzac. Seconded by Alderman Shower. Discussion? The roll, please. Belzac? Aye. Shower? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Six ayes and one absent. That warrant has been approved. The next warrant? Okay, requesting approval of warrant number 181916 in the amount of $662,253.44 from the listed funds. Payroll for the period ended December 6th in the amount of $285,594.17 for a total to be approved of $947,847.61. We have a motion to approve. Alderman Kenny, seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Discussion? In the roll, please. Kenny? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Belzac? Aye. Shower? Aye. Ke um, Klistic? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Six ayes and one absent. The warrant has been approved. Treasurer Corn, you want to go over the monthly report? Hey, the monthly report for the seven months ended November 30th reflects oh. general fund year to date revenue of $10,285,010, expenditures of $8,119,758, current balance of $3,370,202, water fund year to date revenue $5,256,147, expenditures of $3,663,812, current balance of $2,622,960. Motor fuel tax fund year to date revenue $335,093, expenditures of $187,191, current balance of $537,341. Water depreciation fund year to date revenue $3,453,609, expenditures of $1,398,434, current balance of $2,169,220, and a capital improvement fund year to date revenue of $224,851, expenditures of $3,928,808, current balance of $5,418,089. Any questions for the treasurer on that report? Okay, let's move on to uh, standing committee reports. Alderman Marquez. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The Municipal Services Committee is going to meet, I believe, next Wednesday, December 26th at 6.30 here in the Council Chambers. 1226 at 6 30. Okay. Alderman Shower. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Our next admin finance meeting is tentatively scheduled for January 7, uh, 2019 at 6 p.m. in our upstairs meeting room. Okay. And uh, do we have a police committee report? I have that they're tentatively scheduled to meet on January 21st at 6 p.m. in the police department training room. Thank you. Let's move on to questions, comments. Mayor, I'm, I'm sorry. On the sorry. meeting, it is typical that the council does not meet the first, um, the first Monday in January. Typically, it's around that holiday. We don't have any agenda items pending, so we'll most what, likely what we'll not meet. What date does it fall on again? The seventh. Seventh. It falls on the seventh. Yeah. Okay. So. And we have historically not had. Yeah, we typically do not meet that, and, and nor would the admin finance committee. But so that's, you know, at this point, there's no agenda items we would need to be on. So. So, it, uh, how do we announce that if if 
Well, he's an, we have announced January 7th as the that administrative finance meeting. Uh, what, what well, that's the next schedule we'll, that oh, we don't have any. We I didn't talk. Yeah, when we announce that he's going to postpone it or cancel it. We usually put in direct connect if okay. we're going to if if meetings are canceled. Alrighty. Or there's no agenda. So you have to do a meeting. 24 hours notice for the papers or whatever. Not for a cancel, no. Oh, okay. No, there's been plenty of times where you've announced and then there was no a pending agenda yeah. items. We never had a meeting. Right. So the bottom line is we'll get the probably the notice that Friday beforehand and go from there. Okay. So. All righty. Let's then move on to questions, comments, uh, agenda related. I believe we covered everything during our work session. So there. Uh, does anybody in the audience want to address the council on any of the items on the agenda? Okay, then let's move on to old business and there being no old business, we'll move right to the consent agenda. I typically read all of the items that are on the consent agenda because we don't take them <coughs> individually. They are, uh, it's an omnibus, omnibus vote. So I will read the, the uh, A through H items. The first is a motion to grant a raffle of the, a grant a waiver of the raffle license bond for the Lions Club. Uh, and the next is a motion to approve a resolution to adopt a memorandum in, un, in of understanding regarding the peer jury program between the village of Downers Grove and the city of Darien. Next item is a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the purchase of new video surveillance systems for the police and municipal service, services departments from current technologies in the amount of $101,754. The next item is a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the execution of an inter intergovernmental jurisdictional boundary line agreement between the city of Darien and the village of Downers Grove. The next item is a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the city administrator to execute the second amendment to the structure lease agreement with Verizon Wireless <coughs> approved by resolution R-59-11 with the first amendment executed in August of 2016, which allows Verizon Wireless to locate telecommunication equipment on our Darien cell tower located at 1041 South Frontage Rose Road. The next item is a motion to approve a resolution accepting a proposal from Backflow Solutions, Inc. to establish and maintain a potable water backflow device program from 2019 through 2023 at a pass-through cost of $12.95 per de backflow device. The next item, item is a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the mayor to accept a proposal from Christopher Burke Engineering in an amount not to exceed $27,100 for the surveying and engineering of the open ditch and storm water conveyance system for 67th Street. The next item is a motion to approve an ordinance amending the sign code, deleting the amortization requirement for non-conforming signs in the Route 83 corridor. Those are the items A through H. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Marquez, seconded by Alderman Schauer. The roll, please. Marquez. Aye. Schauer. Aye. Belzac. Aye. Klistic. Aye. Kenny. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. Six ayes and one absent. All items have been approved. Let's move to new business now. And the first item is a motion to submit an application to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a zoning text amendment to review, hold a public hearing thereon, and report its findings and recommendations to the Municipal Services Committee and City Council regarding the OR&I office Research and Light Industry District and the I-1 General Industri Industrial District. Do we have a motion to approve? Alderman Kenny, seconded by Alderman Belzik. I applaud this process that has been put in place for this review of uh, the very important review of our, of our ordinances regarding uh, these, these zoning areas. The roll, please. Kenny. Aye. Belzik. Aye. Vaughn. Aye. Shower. Aye. Marquez. Aye. Clistic. Aye. Six ayes and one absent. The item has been approved. Item B is a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the purchase of one new enclosed trailer, model number RC trailer, from A and W Auto Truck and Trailer, in the amount of nine thousand seven hundred thirty-nine dollars. Do I have a motion to approve? 
Bel Alderman Belzik. Second, Alderman Schauer. Discussion? The roll. Belzik? Aye. Schauer? Aye. Vaughn? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Klistic? Aye. Kenny? Aye. Six ayes and one absent. Remind me how old it was? <laughs> 25 years. 25 years old. <laughs> We're just now we're just now replacing it. Okay. Gee, uh, Dan, you finally got what you wanted. There. I know. <laughs> it's one more out of the way. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Questions, comments, and announcements. Alderman Marquez. Um, I don't know if the council is aware, but uh, former mayor uh, Al Stromali had passed away uh, December 11th in Arizona. I believe he was also a citizen of the year at one time. Yes, he uh, was. Uh, December 11th, Al was 87 years old. All the services were private, and they were all in Arizona. I had uh, no idea. No. Yeah, the Daring Historical Society actually uh, put out a notice on Facebook the other day. We and I announced it at the other night at the um, Lions Club dinner meeting because a lot of people knew Al. But um, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe you might know because usually. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that I, we didn't. They didn't notify us. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised that they didn't. Yeah, because he was a, a former citizen of the year as well as a former mayor of this. Mayor, yeah. yeah, former mayor, and he was one of the. I don't, th I don't think he was a founding father, but he was one of the earlier mayors in the city of Darien. So um, I, there is no um, memorial that was mentioned or anything like that. But I just wanted the council and the viewing public to be aware of that. Okay, I saw I saw Sharon Smurha, who, who was a good friend. Uh, at uh, whose wake did I just see her at? Oh my goodness! Yeah, so she and probably knows. Mr. McGinley said that his mom just recently died too. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lou. Uh, it, it, historically, that's how long I've been around. I mean, he was our city treasurer for a very long time. His picture is out there. Landslide. Dan doesn't. Dan doesn't look like him at all. Landslide, Lou. <laughs> uh, landslide. Yeah. Well, nobody else ran. <laughs> It's going to be like landside court. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was nice to see Dan again. Everybody's Any other announcements? I, I just wish all of you Merry Christmas. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. And hopefully all of our lives will slow down a little bit after, you know, with this week. My goodness. I feel like I'm, my motor is constantly running here. Any, any other announcements? Okay, then I wish I ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman Klistic, seconded by Alderman Kenny. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.